Welcome, everyone. We are, uh, our topic here is creating dynamic fluid forms in a flash. And uh, I'm the president and CEO of Gideon Taylor, Paul Taylor. And I'm going to do a quick run through of how to use our form tool, GTE forms, to build dynamic fluid forms without doing fluid development. Uh, kind of a uh, holy grail outcome that uh, you have to see to believe. So we're here to show you. Um, we have some more 20 minute sessions coming, including a repeat of this session this afternoon, but you'll see some sample HCM forms coming up here uh, shortly after this session. If you want to, is this in the same room, Scott? No, it's a so, different session. Okay, different session. Uh, you've got sample financial forms later later this evening, and uh, and then we'll be covering some. Again, we'll do this form demo again tomorrow. If you have other people you want to pull in, we've got uh, a, some full sessions on navigation, on uh, okay. on that, and on enabling external participants in PeopleSoft. So uh, that's so, uh, Oh, now I'm getting an echo. Scott, do you want to actually... There we go. Oh, I don't have the ability to mute anyone, unfortunately. I will do it. I'm going to mute everyone, but, uh, it, but you can unmute for legitimate questions. Uh, or if you just want to freak out with uh, joy at, at what we accomplish here. So please join us. We're happy to have you. Uh, GTE Forms is a product from Gideon Taylor. We recently, we also have a consulting practice, which has expanded this year as we merged with Newberry Enterprise Services so that we can now provide a full, serv a, a full range of PeopleSoft services, including development of business processes and custom experiences like we'll be showing you today, but extending to always current services, managed services, cloud hosting. We just went live with BYU Hawaii on OCI Cloud on Friday, had a smooth and, and beautiful go live, and they're experiencing great results already. And we also have a... Uh, a robotic process automation practice, which if you are not familiar with uh, UiPath or similar products, it's a, uh, a great way to automate the, uh, the flow of business in your organization and works great with tools like GTE Forms and PeopleSoft. So we're going to be talking about GTE Forms and um, I liked uh, David Bain uh, last year, I believe, pointed out this, uh, we kind of built this slide based on a comment that he made as we were uh, showing him some GTE forms functionality. He said, this really fills the gap between in delivered PeopleSoft between PeopleSoft forms and approval builder, which is really a very simplistic form builder that's intended just for, for very simple processes and custom fluid development where you have to build things technically speaking from the ground up and and uh, you have a very technical process to create a new application. GTE Forms fills this gap with a rich list of configuration-based features, including, first off, just getting the forms on the, the fields on the page. You can build forms, uh, build fluid applications without developers and without doing any fluid development. The functional user can build a really robust form and in not a lot of time. That can include pre-population of fields, dynamic defaulting, conditional behavior so that you see certain fields at certain times uh, based on the values in other fields, restricting valid values, routing that's really, really robust and uh, to, in order to get approval processing lots of ability to manage the content, attachments, emails and notifications to the users in the business process, multi-language support. Uh, Email-based approvals we'll be having a session on here later on this, this, uh, this afternoon. You, 
the ability to, to run analytics, and again, it's all mobile, mobile friendly, fluid forms, and it's heavily technically extensible. So even though you can do all of this stuff as a business analyst, it doesn't prevent tech people from being able to get in and extend the value and the functionality of these forms even beyond what can be done functionally. So with that, I'm going to build a form and I'm going to do it so fast. We're all going to be breathless at the end, but I'm just going to try to, to hit everything that we, everything that it takes in order to build out a, a simple form process in, on hyperspeed. This is going to be a work at home form. And this is a view of what we're building. So at the end, so this, at the end of this, we're going to have this form built that will allow an employee to set the schedule of when they're going to be working from home and when they're going to be working at the office location. So that's our target. This is a, a very functional form with lots of features, which we will build really fast. So um, to begin with here, we're here in, this is inside of PeopleSoft because GTE Forms is a PeopleSoft application. It's a bolt-on, so it installs inside your PeopleSoft system. And using our custom setup tables, we're going to set up a new form process. We're going to call it the Work at Home Forum, WA for short. We're going to put it in a form family, a training form family to begin with at least. So we've got some, some uh, general fields to fill out, and now we're going to set that we want this to be a fluid form, and we're going to start building out pages and fields. One thing to note here, the, uh, the form type can have multiple conditions. Those are situations in which the form looks significantly different. Um, and then you can have multiple tasks inside of that, add, evaluate, update, view. And then inside of those tasks, you can have multiple pages. And those pages can have multiple segments, and segments can have multiple fields. So a nice structure on which to build this process. So we're going to start out with a few pages to begin with, really just one page, and then a results page that will, uh, that will show when we're done. And we can add in instructions and in all over the form in different places. This is page level instructions that shows up at the top of the page and can be rich text. Okay, so now we'll go in to uh, create the segments of the page that we'll put the forms in. And segments can either be column segments or grid segments. This is a column segment. So this is non-repeating data. And you'll see I'm using, in this segment, uh, fields that already exist in PeopleSoft. So I just have to type them in, and I can grab the labels right out of PeopleSoft. It knows the formatting of those fields. But I can also, right here, I just typed that description, and it generated a field for me. So you, you can have it both ways. You can reuse existing PeopleSoft fields, or you can quickly create your own fields. But these will still be PeopleSoft fields, and you'll end up with queryable records at the end of this so that you'll be able to actually uh, pull data out of these forms and query it or, uh, or push it somewhere else. So you end up with PeopleSoft data really quickly, uh, with, and a functional person is able to build that out. Here we're doing some, some funky stuff with instructions on this segment so that we can actually link to an outside uh, data source for the, uh, uh, for the policies for working from home. Now here we're getting into defaulting. We have uh, the, uh, the smart source is a, a data source that can be dynamic. And a delivered smart, we have a delivered smart source for current date. So this is just going to pre-populate that field with the current date, but allow it to be changed. We can set whether that is read-only or whether they can edit it. This one will set to the current employee ID. Being able to pre-populate the data in a form is really powerful. 
Uh, here, we use a new feature called a data pool that lets us query data from the broader PeopleSoft application. So I know the EMPL ID because I know who's logged in. This is going to allow me to pull in the personal data row for that employee, and then I'm going to be able to pull out their name based on that. So now I've, I've got a name lookup done. I didn't need any tech to do that. That would typically be something you would build in App Designer if you didn't have GTE forms. Okay, so we'll add another segment. And uh, this one is to gather the location information for, their, uh, for a couple of different addresses. We want to be able to gather the home address that the person will be working from, and will also be displaying what their physical office address is. So here we're doing the, the uh, physical office, meaning the, their, their work office. Um, Scott, could you check the comment, uh, the question in the chat, see if there's anything we need to respond to there? So, we've, uh, so we're quickly generating the fields that we're going to want for this form. You've got some instruction field, an instruction field that we'll be able to populate with, uh, with custom instructions. And here now we're flipping back to, uh, to wanting to pre-populate some more information. Here we want to get to their job location. So to do that, we've got a daisy chain, a few different records. And uh, again, we can do this without using a tech because using the data pool, as long as I provide the keys for these different records, I can pull data out of them. So I'm going to grab job data and set this to the values that I already have, like the, uh, their EMPL ID. And then I'm going to use the keys from job data to find the location. Uh, well, I've got to, so I end up with a location field, and then I can use the location table and use the value we got from the job record to be able to find their address fields. So again, it's like building a join inside of a form. It gets you access to all of this information. But the cool thing is that if any of those, those key fields change, it actually refreshes all of the information that, that derives down from that. So as they, if they changed... Uh, if we go in for a different employee, we would get different data. So again, we're quickly going through the setup for the data pool so that we can default these fields, the, uh, the state field, for example, from the data pool record that we pointed to the location table. So uh, we're, we're, again, creating more uh, more fields along the way as we need them. We can add instruction information. And uh, we're quickly building out what is going to be a very dynamic form. The, it's very helpful to be able to stick information, uh, text, informational text into the form anywhere that you need it. And it's one of the restrictions that the uh, native forms and approval builder has that we're always working around or that people always need more of the ability to, to rich textify a form. Okay, so now we've got a different set of fields because these are the working from home address fields. We'll stick those in there. You'll see that she keeps on changing. Ashley is the one who did this. Uh, she keeps, keeps on changing the, uh, uh, the label because she puts it in the first the way that she wants to uh, generate the field name, and then she changes it back to show what she wants to show to the end user. Here we're reusing lookups like the, uh, the state prompt from PeopleSoft so that we can uh, get valid values that already exist. And here we're going to add a new segment. This is now a grid segment. So this will be the grid where we show different days of the week so they can enter their plans for the different days. This is a repeating segment. 
and uh, we can enable them to add and delete rows, add some descriptive text. And let's see, let's skip ahead a little bit. And here we can leverage the translate value feature from PeopleSoft to be able to put in the different lookup values that we want for the location that they're going to be working from. There we go. And now we've got, uh, we go back to our form setup. And we are able to use that lookup right here. Just one second. Whoop. Uh oh. I've got a, uh, let me get back to where I was. Oh, okay. I got this messed up here. Just one second. We will get that playing again. Just one moment. All right, sorry, I have a little fire going on in the background there. Got it extinguished. So now as we're as we're filling out this form or filling out this section, we're able to uh, I'm gonna skip head back here to sorry, get to our grid. We've created our external process and now we're filling out all the form, all the fields that we want to have on this row on the grid row. We've got our location that's going to have that lookup that we just set up. We want to use day of the week, which we'll go ahead and use an existing lookup for that. And I'm going to skip ahead here just a little bit to, to we're adding in the time fields, a comment to and from time, uh, a comment about uh, so we can put in any additional data. And now we're actually done doing our segment setup. We've set up three segments. Now we're adding some conditional logic. So the visual if is our built-in logic engine. So we don't want to show that grid until they've, the grid of days until they've filled out the state section. So we know they've given their address. So we just put in a little conditional, uh, a little condition there that will let us say, Okay, once they filled out their address, show them the, the date grid. And now we can uh, do a little bit of uh, look and feel work. We can pull in a, a logo in our step instructions. We can, uh, we can actually add some dynamic, uh, some custom buttons. Here, this is a, a fun GT uh, functional analyst trick here of using Word to build a, a quick and dirty button that we can paste in here and, uh, and actually turn into a live link to push over to, the, uh, to an outside policy. So all kinds of fun things that you can do to, uh, to customize the look and feel of this, of this form. But we're still here with our rapid typing, gonna get it done in 20 minutes. So here now we're adding uh, a few more tasks. We want to be able to add one of these forms. We also want to be able to approve it, to be able to go in and update it, or be able to view it. So we just copied those pages down to these tasks. And now we can add an approval process and say we're going to route this to a particular role to approve. And that can be very complex here. It's very simple, but that can be very complex if we want. We can add a little notification email that says, when this gets uh, completed, send it through to the, uh, send an email through to the original uh, submitter, that would be the employee. 
I'll let them know that their schedule was approved. And uh, here we can create a new email template to readily let someone know that their work at home request was processed. And we can include information from the form if we want. Here we're just putting in the form ID, but uh, we can put in the status, uh, anything from the form that we want to put in or from other, other things inside of PeopleSoft we can, we can add. And here we go. We just uh, flip back to our form setup and implement that uh, email template that we just built. And now we are ready to deploy this form. Deploying makes it available for, uh, for users to be able to access. We can say where we want to deploy it, onto a home page, onto a nav collection, onto a tile. And when we're done with that, we can navigate in and here is our new form. So you click on that and there's the form that we just built. And we can now uh, go in and set our, our oh, I, I think we're, we're going to push some fields around here. We want to move at least one of the fields over into the right columns. We can reorganize them. And, uh, and now, oh, yep, we like it just the way it is. We're pre-populating that physical office location based on the current user. We were able to set the, uh, the work schedule, alternate between physical and, uh, and work from home location. And, uh, and we have just created a new Fluid application in a flash. And uh, here we've got, uh, we've routed it for approvals. The next approver can log in and be able to approve it from there. Okay, and I have used my time, but uh, this, uh, oops, sorry. We're, uh, as I said, lots of feature. It's a very feature-rich application that has allowed us to build some very amazing applications for lots of high-profile customers. Um, I'm just going to point out the. Uh, uh, going to point out the um, the Princeton solution here, where if you think, oh, that was uh, that was unrealistic to be able to build a form that fast. Princeton, they identified the need for two student forms, including um, where a student was, if, whether or not a student was sheltering on place during the uh, initial outbreak of the, of the pandemic. And they identified a need on Thursday. They had two forms in production on Friday. Uh, using configuration-based tools, they, they were able to really create a new uh, student-facing self-service application and have it, have it um, designed, uh, identified the need on one day and live in production the next day. So that is realistic. You really can get things done that fast. Now, it can also be a very high-powered, very feature-rich solution that takes longer to build and that involves many, many other people. But, uh, but it, it really is a tool that ranges from the, from the simple and fast to the complex and thoughtful and covers everything in between. And that is uh, pretty much it. So you can grab this session online, I believe, and, uh, and follow this link if you want to see uh, another, uh, another form type that was built really quickly using functional-only tools. And uh, feel free to give us a call for more information. Phew! Paul, that's exhausting. <sighs> I'm going to go take a nap. Right. As an FYI for the folks uh, that are on the line, uh, we will be posting a copy of this PowerPoint for download in our virtual booth. So uh, it, it will, I've got a uh, session that I need to jump to, but we'll have it out there in, let's say, an hour. So if you want to check it out later this afternoon or download it tomorrow, 
you are certainly welcome to. And the, the and video, I believe, is going to be available via the conference site. So you should be able to find it for this. And this can day. I answer questions here if people want to stay, Scott? Yeah. And, okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to jump here in just a minute. But yeah, if people want to stick around for a few more minutes and, uh, and pepper Paul with questions, you're more than welcome to. There's nothing in the chat right now, but that's not to say that uh, people you aren't can, trying to consume what you what you Right. Or you can just say hi if your old friends like Terry Heap. Or does she already leave? Oh, no, she's there. Terry Heaps is still here. How much? Thank so you. there's a question. How much experience or practice to be able to create that in 20 minutes? <laughs> to, to be able to create that particular form in 20 minutes, you <clears throat> need at least a few months of practice and then the ability to make a recording and speed up the mouse. So, uh, uh, so yeah, that's not a 20-minute form. That's probably... I bet that Ashley built that form originally in two hours, maybe. Um, she she might uh, claim faster. Hi back, Terry. Good to see you. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we do so we do initial training that really gets you set up to be able to build simple forms like this. There are definitely some tricks in there that were uh, for a little more experienced analysts like that uh, custom. Word button that uh, we pasted in there to uh, to to get a, a button look and feel, but uh, all that's accessible, and we have a lot of training materials available, and uh, and a very dynamic user community that you can you can get tips and tricks from. So great question, Leanne. Uh, any other questions or comments or uh, or requests for musical numbers or uh, poetry readings. Now people are really dropping off fast. Well, we appreciate everybody coming. Oh, thank you, Maria. Appreciate that. Uh, and uh, and Christy, and we do appreciate everyone coming. Like I said, we do have a lot of other sessions coming up and we're and if you want to come visit us in our booth we're happy to uh, to give you a more customized look at things and uh, walk through anything that you'd like or to talk about any of your business process pain points and how they could uh, how these tools could help um, Nomonique asked are the forms usually developed in test environments and then fully deployed in production yes uh, typically, you want to go through the same um, the same development test prod path that you would take uh, any other change. But when they're config only like this, there we have a, a, a form transporter uh, feature that helps you move those, just export the form configuration from one instance and import it to the next. So it's very easy to move up the line. If you have technical extensions for the form, then those move just like any other uh, any other development project, uh, either using the uh, your, your typical PeopleSoft uh, migration or using uh, Fire, whatever tool you use to to migrate changes. But uh, any technical development you do is going to be in the bolt-on space, meaning that it doesn't modify any existing, uh, any delivered objects, so they aren't going to complicate your your upgrades. Great question, Dominique. Thank you, and uh, and thanks for all the good comments. Any other questions? All right. Well, very good. Well, as fun as this is, then I, I'm going to call a halt and 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 uh, right off into the sunset thank you everybody and uh, we hope to see you on some more of our mini sessions or at our booth for a live chat take care everybody